Hello, welcome back to my channel. It is Monday, January 22nd, and if you can't tell, I just got done with a super sweaty cardio session, and it kind of melted my eyes a little bit, but it was one of those days where I just felt really good. Usually Mondays are my rest day, but I felt awesome when I got home. I had enough energy, and I just wanted to get my workout out of the way, so I did that. And now that means I get to sleep in tomorrow, so tomorrow will be my rest day instead. And I filmed the whole workout for you guys, so I'm really excited to show you. It's really a combination of a lot of my favorite exercises for back, biceps, a little bit of triceps, and shoulders. So it's a total upper body workout, really bodybuilding style. Um, a lot of the muscle groups that I like to emphasize for um, figure competition specifically, you want wide shoulders, um, well-developed arms, and a nice V taper, so a wide upper back that tapers into a small waist. So those are all really great exercises to do if you're looking for that kind of physique. And I am gonna enjoy my dinner and catch you after the jump. Confessions of a high volume eater. This is an entire bag of shredded lettuce. I eat about one of these a day. I swear I go through enough bags of this to probably support the economy of a small to mid-sized nation. Welcome to another sit down chatty portion of this week's vlog. 
So what I thought I might do today is talk a little bit about the supplementation regime I have going on right now. Um, I, again, I am currently about three weeks into a cut and um, some of my supplementation stays the same when I go into a fat loss phase, but it changes and I thought it'd be kind of a good chance to give you an update because I have added some supplements into my daily routine to kind of just explain to you um, the science behind the supplements I do use. And first, just a very quick disclaimer that supplements should really not be your main concern, especially if you are newer to working out, newer to tracking your nutrition. Diet is going to play about 80% of a role in your body composition. Working out is probably another 15%. Supplements really take up that last one to five percent. Most of them are not going to be about fat loss because I do take them in a fat loss phase for numerous reasons, but at the end of the day, there's really no pill or cream that you can take that's going to do anything to replace the effects of tracking your nutrition and working out intensely. Um, really just making sure you're owning your workouts day to day and that your nutrition is on point, you're getting adequate um, calories and protein to fit your activity needs is the main thing you should be concerned about. However, I do find that supplementation can really help aid your body in recovering and um, basically help to prevent some of the side effects that can come along with the fat loss phase, such as reduced sleep quality, um, increase in stress, water retention. A lot of those things um, can be helped by supplementation. So again, this is kind of the icing on the cake, but I do find these supplements very helpful for me when I go into a fat loss phase and also just um, for my general well-being and um, I will kind of go through one by one, starting with what I take in the morning and then telling you what, about what I take at night. So first things first, when I wake up, the first thing I do is take some multivitamins. Um, again, I really like the Nature Made Adult Gummies and this is for a number of reasons. A, I really do not think you need to be taking a multivitamin, especially if you're not currently dieting. If you are eating to your energy maintenance needs or if, especially if you're eating a surplus, you should be eating enough micronutrient dense foods to give you all of the vitamins, minerals, and all the nutrients that you need on a day-to-day -day level to function optimally. However, if you're in a deficit, or if there are just certain um, foods, for instance, that you do not eat enough of that you think you may be deficient in certain nutrients, for instance, if you're vegan, you will need to supplement with B12, um, and multi can really be helpful in those instances. And so when I am in a fat loss phase, I like to take a multi in the morning. And the main thing I want to let you guys know about a multivitamin is that it's really important, I think, to look at the amounts that you're getting for each vitamin. A lot of multis they pack their products with high levels of water-soluble vitamins. So if you remember from school, fat soluble vitamins A, D, E, and K. Those are ones that it's easier to get toxicity because they are stored in the fat, they're processed by the liver, and they take longer for your body to excrete. However, vitamins such as vitamins B and C are water soluble. So they are excreted in your urine. Um, you, it's really hard to eat a toxic amount of these vitamins. So a lot of times companies will just make their products chock full of vitamins and kind of use that as a selling point. But there are reasons why you want to make sure you're not getting too many of these, especially um, the B vitamins, B6 and B12. If you at all struggle with acne, I know that I am 27 years young and I still have um, the occasional breakout, B12 and B6 can be bad for your acne. Um, the reason, especially with B12, we know that um, supplementation with high levels of B12 can change the way that a certain type of bacteria, which is found on the human skin, um, Propionobacterium, it can change the way that it transcribes certain um, proteins, leading to more inflammation and more acne on the skin. So. What I recommend is looking and making sure that you're not getting any more than 100% of your daily value needs for vitamins B6 and B12. 
B6 um, in particular can reduce your skin sensitivity to testosterone levels, which really helps clear up acne. Um, it promotes the synthesis of RNA and DNA, which is needed for cell turnover, um, skin repair, and skin regrowth. Um, it may help speed up the time between um, skin scarring and healing. And B6 and magnesium uh, together can actually help with premenstrual syndrome. So again, these B vitamins are really good to have, but not in the way that they're dosed in a lot of products. So always check the back for that. So after I've taken my multi, the next thing I like to do is pop in four of these fish oil with lutein capsules. Now I searched far and wide for a fish oil capsule that would give me a, the best bang for my buck. These GNC capsules have 1,000 to 290 milligrams total of omega-3s, and that includes 650 milligrams of EPA and 350 milligrams of DHA, and I remember it being pretty damn good for the price. There's really strong evidence that fish oil can be good for your heart health. Remember, heart disease is still the number one killer in America, so anything that we can do to help lower those odds is a good thing in my book. Um, really, it will help increase your high density lipoprotein or your HDL or your good cholesterol and decrease your low density lipoprotein or your bad cholesterol, which leads to overall increased heart health. Um, there's also some evidence that it may help um, improve your mood, it may reduce symptoms of depression in people who are prone to depression, um, it may have an effect on working memory and just general sense of well-being. So not only will your heart be happy, but you could find that you may be happier too when you start taking fish oil. The main reason I take it, to be honest, when in a fat loss phase is because I want to make sure that I'm getting all of my fatty acids and that can be hard for me. I like to go with a higher carb, high protein, and lower fat approach when I'm dieting. To me that makes the most sense because it gives me the most energy possible for my workouts. I tend to thrive on a higher carb diet. And I also find that I can have more volume in my foods, which keeps me fuller for longer. So by taking some fish oil every day, I can really make sure that I'm supplementing my dietary fat with some high quality fats in supplementation form, which will just help me be healthier overall in the long run. Last thing I do in the morning is that I will take one capsule of ashwagandha. So I'll take 450 milligrams in the morning. Ashwagandha is known as an adaptogen, which means it um, changes the way the body reacts to stress. So it lowers the body's response to stress. Um, that means it really lowers the perception of anxiety and it also decreases the physical levels of cortisol in the blood. Um, it may increase cardio endurance and also increases the amount of luteinizing hormone, uh, which helps ovulation, so it can be good for fertility. Also, um, not just in women, but in men, um, there's some studies that suggest that it could improve sperm motility and sperm quality. Um, Because of its effects on luteinizing hormone, um, it's known to help improve sex drive. And um, it's also GABAergic, which means it's an agonist on the GABA receptor. And the GABA receptor has um, sedating properties, so I don't find that taking one 450 milligram capsule this in the morning does anything to make me feel sleepy or sluggish. In fact, I really just feel very calm, um, you know, happy, less stressed. Um, if you do combine this with any kind of alcohol, that will create a synergistic effect with the effects on GABA because alcohol is also a GABAergic compound. Um, so just be aware of that. I don't think that you can really have serious toxicity, but I've taken one of these with you know a couple glasses of wine at night and it will knock you out. So I do not recommend operating heavy machinery if you're going to take this with some alcohol. Um, I take one of these in the morning and then I will take two at night. So um, I kind of spread this out a little bit, but I find one in the morning just gives me a very calm and um, low stress mindset. And then at night it just helps me relax further and get a good quality sleep. Shifting into what I take at night. So I will first talk about magnesium glyconate. So I take 400 milligrams of this every night, about 30 minutes before bed. And I have to say, of all of these supplements I'm talking about, magne magnesium has had a huge, huge effect on my sleep quality, which is the main reason I recommend taking it. 
Um, it's pretty well documented that being in a fat loss phase, being in a calorie deficit over a long period of time can interfere with sleep quality. So any kind of supplements that you can take and any kind of behavioral changes you can make or environmental changes you can make to improve your sleep is going to really pay off. Um, so not only do I take magnesium because I find that it helps promote uh, my sleep quality, but um, I've also found, and this is the reason I'm wearing a sweater in my bedroom, uh, keeping my room, I won't even say cool, I'm gonna say just keeping it cold. I have found recently over the past few weeks of just keeping my room as cold as possible. I've been having some of the best sleep I've had in years. Uh, not only does it just help me sleep better throughout the night and I'm tossing and turning less and waking up less in the night, but I also found that it keeps me out of my bedroom in the day. And there may be reason to believe that being on your bed and working on it can kind of create this bad psychological connection between work and your bed. Your bed, as they say, should be reserved for two things, sleep and sex. And so, Keeping it as um, free from the stressors of daily life as possible can really go a long way to making sure that you are getting higher quality sleep. I found that now I'm doing all of my work downstairs, on the counter, in my la on my laptop, I keep my charger down there. I'm working pretty much full time downstairs. And because it's so cold up here, I'm really only up here to sleep and shoot videos. <laughs> the last thing I will talk about because it's probably the most recent addition to my supplementation and something I've really found helpful is vitamin D3. Um, vitamin D has a list of awesome properties to it. Um, I personally found that in combination with magnesium, it's really further helped my sleep quality. It's really helped my mood too. Um, there is some evidence that the current uh, daily values for vitamin D may be way off. And so what I like to do is I will have 1,000 I use of vitamin D in the morning and then I'll have another 2,000 at night. As you'll notice, these are gummies because I like to take my vitamins in candy form because I'm six. Um, so vitamin D has a lot of great properties. Um, it lowers your risk of heart disease and colorectal cancer, again, two of the most deadly diseases in the US. It can increase your uh, mood and general sense of well-being and, again, promote sleep quality. So what I'll do is I'll usually take these. Um, I'm a night showerer, so I'll take these 30 minutes before bed or right before I shower. And by the time my head hits the pillow, they've had time to be metabolized and be active in my bloodstream. And there you have it. That is my full supplementation routine currently. So again, we've got the multi, the fish oil, and one capsule of ashwagandha in the morning, and then the magnesium D3 and two capsules of magnesium at night. Hope that cleared up a little bit. Um, I will leave all of the scientific evidence for these different compounds and vitamins below. Um, I will also link you to my DIY pre-workout video that I did a few months back because I have kept my pre-workout supplements the same. Most of that is really just caffeine and creatine, the main ones. Um, a few extras that I've thrown in there that have some evidence suggesting um, that it helps improve the quality of your workouts. But um, that's all stayed the same. So really this is just my morning and night. So thanks so much for joining me for this week. Um, I will be back with another video very soon. In the meantime, feel free to give this video a like if you enjoyed it. If you found any of the content helpful, please do subscribe to me if you want to keep up updated on my journey throughout my prep this year and leave a comment below if you have any questions or if you have any topics that you'd like me to cover. I'm always, always open for new ideas. And until then, I will see you in the next one.